So the first step I always do is I start to outline uh, my midtones. I'm going to do that with the blue black. My black's still a little bit wet on the model. Our paints are uh, really cool because they have a little bit of a longer open time than other brands that you're familiar with. So I might get a little bit of blend in here, which isn't a bad thing. But like I'm going to know that this entire top surface, right? We're just going to go with a light coming from above. So this entire top surface is going to eventually have a highlight on it. Right? And then as this hook goes underneath, it won't have as much highlight down here. So I'm just going to kind of start and blend from about that area of the curve. Because this blue black is still a very, very dark color. Right? So I'm just going to have the blue black dip right in and leave the tip of this thing black down here. Right? Might catch the edge here. But then as the hook on the top side comes out, right, it would be dark up underneath here. Then as it comes down this edge, I would get some light intruding down this edge and a course across the top of the hook point down here. Right? Because our light is coming from up here. So everything that faces back towards your light source Right? We need to uh, make sure that we get some color on. Even with these darkest colors, and I usually start here, and you know, I'm, I'm not super thin, but I'm thin enough that it can still layer over the black, and I can kind of focus it in to make it brighter where I need it. Right? So I'll brighten up just the top of the tip there. Then I'll very quickly just kind of have that go into nothing with the black up top. Now, as it circles back out of the hook upper area, and we start getting here, you'll notice, just look at it in the camera, see how it's dark here, but it starts getting lighter here? It's telling me what I need to do, right? The light in the room tells you what you need to do. You just have to be careful to always, you know, use your light from the same direction. Like if I paint this on here now, but then I move the model like this later, I may be like, why did I paint that bright? Because you'll forget, right? So just kind of set up, hold the model kind of still in an area and look at it and say, okay, this is directing me. This is showing me where I want all my brightness. So I'm going to do this top edge again, right? This edge down here, because again, remember this blue black is very dark, so I can still get away with it into my darker areas. And I only want to leave the black base in the darkest of areas right up in here and right at the bottom of the hook. Okay. Brighten up the hook as it comes out from underneath and then just kind of blend it in as it goes up. So even though that's a very, very subtle difference in color, right? We've got blue black running off uh, along pretty much the entire top of the hook, right? And then the black is only left right there and right there, right? So technically you could base it in blue black and then just put the black in. But again, I prefer to always start with the darkest color and paint light on top of the darkest color because then the darkest color is always underneath all of your other colors, right? As opposed to having it, because paint is a physical thing. Paint is a thing that when you apply it, it goes over the top and it can build up texture that looks like it's closer to you than not. And so if you paint your shadows on, they can look like they lay on top of the color of the model. And that's not how that works. You want the color to come out of the shadow, not the shadow to lay on top of the color in most cases. So, but there's a lot of people that argue with me with that. So don't, uh, don't think that you're wrong if you've been doing it in some other way. Um, all right, so now uh, I'm going to start taking a little bit of the dark warm gray and I'll mix it a little bit in with the blue black. Just that I'm as old as Leonardo da Vinci. What the balls? <laughs> One with the model. The model is with me. Loves Muffin says, how did we never get to our madness goal? We hit it, and now we're starting over. <laughs> we hit $20 million, and now we're starting over again. People never forget Chevette. How can you forget Chevettes, man? The Chevette is not a car that allows itself to be forgotten. That's not how this works. Right? That's not how this works. Right, so I'm going to put a little bit of dark warm gray out and a little bit of bright neutral gray out so that I can start working those in and blending them with my blue black. If you were just doing grays, which would probably be an easier way to start this out, then of course you don't really have to worry about mixing too many of your colors. I want to get a little bit of that blue hue in here. Okay. So now if I take a little bit of the dark warm gray and mix it in, I'm going to get a little bit of a lighter color because even the dark warm gray is a little bit lighter than the standard blue black. Right. And then I'm going to paint, I'm going to go back and say, okay, so now this top area, 
is pretty much entirely going to be bright. So it has a, a section to it, right? We're going to call this a, a section here between these peaks, right? So we have this little geometric shape in there that would be bright. We also are going to do the same thing as it comes up from the curve of the hook. The curve now, remember it was dark under here, then we went blue-black, so we want to pick up probably about here and start making this this brighter color. Now you could wet blend this if you're comfortable wet blending so that you didn't have to go through and, and do so many steps in actual color. It's up to you. But we just want to get a nice blend and transition from dark to lighter color. So again, the point of the blade here, just coming out of the shadowed area there, it's brighter. And then probably just go ahead and do this edge as well. And a little bit down here. All right, but now we're starting to section things off smaller and smaller. And then the next time we do this, we're gonna just grab the bright neutral gray. And we're gonna create that color. So now we're gonna take a pretty big jump in value. And the first thing we wanna do is I'm gonna catch this top edge where we know we're gonna have brightness. And now this dips, right? So we've got a concave nature to the top of this hook. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do is while I painted it all bright, now with this color, I wanna start figuring out which side I want brighter. I'm just gonna pick this one just arbitrarily, right? I'm gonna say I'm gonna come over to this side and start layering my brightness up here. Just make sure I've got enough of a easy transition into my other colors that I don't get race stri racing stripes out of it. And then I'm going to grab these edges now, even though this isn't anywhere near our brightest color. I'm going to go ahead and grab all my edges. On this side, since I left my brightness there, I'm going to go ahead and grab this center detail where it's kind of a bevel, right, and section that off. Then I've got this brightness that's going to run all along this line. Remember what we talk about. The harder the surface, the sharper the edge, the further light is going to travel along that edge. So I'm going to get pretty bold here, and I'm going to run this all the way down into my shadow as well. Okay. Now I also need a shine here. Right? Remember our brightness works up towards this point. So I'm going to go ahead and making sure that my brush is always traveling in the direction of dark to light. My brush stroke starts down low on the curve, brings it up towards this area where we created that division of the bevel. And then just kind of falls into that edge is the goal. Okay. And so Zambies, I don't know if you're still out there. This is kind of what you had going on yesterday, right? I feel like. So correct me if I'm wrong, but Zambies was painting a weapon and the weapon wound up being a lot in these mid-tones. This kind of color here is what we're gonna call our, our kind of strong mid-tone. This is the defining color of our metal right now is this light gray. I'm gonna catch the point here with it. Probably too thin. Grab the edge there. Also want to start grabbing this outside part of the bevel. Using the side of my brush to have it travel all the way up that edge. That's going to hit with all of this that I did up here. And we want to continue that along this side. Turn my brush. I've got my brush flattened out and then I'm using the sharp side of the bevel to catch the side here. Right. And then I'm gonna grab just a little bit of brightness on the inside of this under part of the blade here. Like so. Do the same thing right over here.
Leave a little bit of a gap for darkness on the underside. Let me see if I can't get zoomed in a little bit more, maybe. Okay. So leaving a little bit of darkness underneath the bevel here, but running the brightness to the bevel on the side from our light source up top. Okay. And then also catch this bladed edge on the top too. Okay. So I've got my bladed edge going all the way across all the way down caught a shine coming up towards this end of the blade here i've got uh, that darker darker darkest so i've got one two three four colors showing there i've got one two colors up top because it's got light hitting directly at it there's going to be less need for darkness up here unless you want to do a reflection so you don't need all four transitions a lot of times people will make the mistake of saying well i've got this curve here i've got black blue black right then my mix of blue black and dark warm gray then this mix of bright uh, neutral gray and that previous color, right? So I've got four colors. So they try to fit four colors up here, not realizing that, well, light hits this section almost directly. So this is going to have less dark color up here. This one only has all those colors because light hits and then disintegrates as it goes down into the dark reflection of the ground and shadow itself. Same with this underside, right? Black, and then we come out to brightness here and out to brightness on the bottom edge. So I'll be, always be thinking in terms of what your... Uh, shape would be doing how much shadow it would have on it and don't only, and don't force yourself into a corner thinking oh my god you know i gotta somehow put all these colors on here and that holds true of everything you do with painting a lot of times we try to force ourselves into creating uh, blends that don't necessarily need to be there and you may run out of space or it may wreck your values your model starts looking a little funky because it's too bright or too dark or looks too modulated. Modulation means that we go from bright to dark to bright to dark to bright to dark. And sometimes that can get a little monotonous, so you got to be careful. We want to catch this edge as well, all the way up underneath. Right. I've got two kinds of wet in my pants. Two kinds? Chaotic Night Network, what is going on? Hi. Hello, howdy, how are ya? Bloodwalker, this is uh, one of the models from the board game Hate that Coolman or Not put out. He's kind of a lizardy guy. They make uh, uh, they made this board game. It was limited edition. It was only available during the Kickstarter, but it's got some fantastic models. So we've been painting portions of lots of them. I think he's part of the same thing, right? So this guy's all flesh and and crazy claws and things like that. So we we did a. Uh, a tutorial on doing the flesh here with the green underpainting and all of that that turned out really nice but all the models are fantastic the material they're made out of is kind of screwy because it's kind of like a rubber <laughs> you know it's that resiny plastic that's bendy right so all the all the parts are kind of bendy but yeah so hank our post-apocalyptic uh, mall cop that we've been doing we need to get back and do some more work on hank he's still got a lot of stuff to do on him but they're great models. If you like, uh, like post-apocalyptic barbarian style, because that's what this whole world is. Um, really, really neat. It's done by, uh, the world is created and dreamt up by Adrian Smith, who did a lot of the like chaos uh, warrior codex for Warhammer Fantasy Battles. He did a lot of Space Marine stuff. He's done a lot of the, the recognizable things that you would know uh, in Games Workshop world. No, we're no glazing. A really pigment-rich glaze? No, I'm really just using barely any dampness on the brush at all, Duff. So I'm not really glazing. I'm just, I'm just going with, you know, one coat, right? So you, could, you should be able to see, like, it's not really a blend. Most of what you are considering a blend here is done mainly because I've mixed the colors on the palette so that I've done just very gradual increases in value until I got to this bright one here. And with that one, I went a little wetter so that the edge where I start my brush stroke doesn't, it gives me kind of a false blend right in there. But no, I'm not glazing, technically. Right? It's just kind of a, a, like, put your brush in the water, get it clean, and then wipe it on the paper towel real quick and then go to the paint. So you're not full water load of dampness, you're just kind of that mid-ground. The neighbor in the sitcom? It could be, yeah, exactly. Grins, what's going on, man? 
He got a new toy, a Subaru. Uh-oh, WRX, what? He's screaming around the neighborhood now. Zombie brush, oh my God. Is, did we have a Siobhan sighting? Siobhan, what's going on, man? And what has Siobhan met with? A taste, a taste of his own medicine. Hey, Siobhan, did you know that in 1998, something, something announcer table? <laughs> something, something's announcer table? All right, so now we've got that set. So what we want to do now is I want to go in with just, because I'm pretty good with this. I feel like that's pretty good. I want to get a little bit more mid-tone on this underside, so I'm going to grab the uh, dark warm gray again and kind of throw it just a little bit further up underneath. Like so. Get my brush a little damp. Give myself a point, and then with the damp tip of the brush, I can just kind of very quickly smudge blend that end to my darkness up top. Just apply a little bit of pressure, push in on the paint, yada yada, you're good. Then go back and get that little bit of a brighter color going again. And make sure that that lives over the top of our dark warm gray. Again, with a little bit of dampness, and then just kind of press those two into one another. Like so. And that's a pretty good setup. We've got a really nice dark reflection on the inside of the blade, which would be from his hand, perhaps. We could add once, like if we were doing this and in, in, like seriously painting this miniature, once we figured out his skin color, it would be a great place to throw a little bit of that skin color up into the inside of the blade. Because the inside of the blade is facing the skin, it would be where it reflects back off of it. Also on this side right here, we could do a little bit of the skin color reflection if we were going to do it shiny. Right. So now's that point, because I'll show you what I and I, again, I don't know if Zambies is here. She hasn't spoken up. So if she's not and she comes back and watches this, hopefully uh, this will make some sense, because this is the point that bogs a lot of people down. They'll get good blends on their blade. They'll get their surfaces defined. They'll have the brightness in the right location. Right. And then they'll come in with a brighter highlight. We're just going to go to bright neutral gray now straight away. So this will be the brightest color we use for a while. Right. So bright neutral gray. Bam. And they'll come in and they'll grab this edge, right? Because we know that this top edge facing the light is going to be all brightness, pretty much. So we stretch right along there, boom. Right. And we can take this edge here, work it down. This one won't go all the way. We need to start blending our edges now. So we'll bring it around the, the horn like that and then just kind of fade it where before it gets all the way around the edge, it disappears. All right, and notice, because right now you start feeling like it shines more. Every time you go a step brighter, you start feeling more shine. All right, so we've got this bevel again, right in here. Put a little bit of a hook on my brush. And then we've got this bevel over here. We already said we're pushing our brightness this way, so it's going to catch against this bevel here, and that's going to be our brightest shine. I'm just going to continue that on. Using those horizontal strokes to create my vertical line here. So I get a little texture out of that. At this bottom edge, I'm just tracing back in where I know I've already got my brightness, right? We define that this is going to be bright, so I'm going to come down here. And again, with making sure that my brush direction always pulls this color from darkness to brightness. Work from about halfway into my previous color, back out to the tip. Like so, and then grab out of that brightness. This is where the reflection for this bevel is going to come from. I'm going to drag that bevel brightness up a little bit, not like so. 
And same with the inside edge of the blade. This one I'm going to kind of braille, give it a little bit of dot, dot, dash highlight because the inside of that blade might be textured, beat up. I don't know that he'd actually hit anything with it, but I can see it having, you know, a little bit of texture from getting hung on things and so on and so forth. Okay. Want to bring off of the shine from the tip there would trace back onto the underside of the blade just a little bit. So I'll just grab that edge. The plastic here is really screwy, so it's not catching very well. I have to fake it a little. It's got a weird bluntness to it. It's not sharp like it looked. Hang on a sec. Got something in my eye. All right. Is this Vor Nash? I don't know. I never know the names. I never paid attention. I just took them out of the box and put them on a shelf and then threw the box away. Well, the box is on the floor, so that'd be a lie. But if you know that that's what it is, then yes, that's what it is. Okay, so we've got this bevel here. Uh, where the brightness comes down the bevel and hits this edge, we're going to want to then stretch that shine out from there along this part of the blade for a little bit in each direction. Even though this isn't the edge that faces our light source. Let's quickly grab it and then have it go away. Because remember, anytime light hits along an edge, it'll radiate down that edge. Okay. Same thing right here. Even this brightness that hits this bevel, I want to then grab and put a little bit of brightness down the bevel away from that spot where it hits the edge. Like so. And then get these bright spots right at the end on the underside of the blade here. Right on the top. This is going to be just a little dot of paint making a line down right in there. Of course that has to catch a little bit on that back edge. And this one needs to catch a little bit on that underside. I'm going to keep saying it, right? Anytime light hits an edge, run that light out along that edge. But don't make the mistake of highlighting the whole edge, okay? Uh, G-Man, I don't do any commissions. So everything you see me paint is literally just to help teach you guys stuff. Yeah, I don't, do, I don't do commissions, or I haven't for a long time. I still have a couple in the shop right now, so I guess that's a lie. I am working on a couple of models that will eventually go back to people. But uh, no, 90% of what you see me paint are, uh, are just projects for the studio. And 90% and of those, sorry, I don't know what's going on in my eye. 90% um, of those are uh, never models that we intend to finish with just like something like this where, you know, we'll just do like the non-metallic on this blade to show people how to do a steel blade and get more of a, an understanding there. And he may go on the shelf and not get paint on him for a year. So thank you so much for the follow. Welcome, 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 everybody. Tankers. WX, WRX motors are neat. The pistons are horizontal. Oh, is it a flathead? 
So usually a head top it where the valves literally sit on top of the block. Is it an inline, like a like single inline on a WRX? Two different heads. Oh, okay, gotcha. I've never worked on on foreign cars. The nearest neighbor is a half a kilometer. There ain't no neighborhood here. You guys are country bumpkins. In line, but two pistons, point left and two right. Oh, okay, gotcha. Horizontally opposed. Yeah, okay, makes sense. Instead of V, it's like the old BMW flat fours, right? I mean, maybe completely different, but. All right, so there we go. So this is the point that a lot of people get stuck at because they start to look at this. Oh, we didn't do the brightness here. Sorry, not quite there yet. We got to pick up the brightness on the back side of the uh, curve of the blade, right? So I need to, right back here, do the same thing we did here, right? We brought brightness into our hot spot. We need to do the same thing here. I may be a little too wet here. I think I got too much moisture on my brush, but we'll see. Yeah, I did. This is glazing, and this is not what I want to be doing. But if you're comfortable doing it, then maybe it's maybe it works for you. I'm looking to have a little bit more impact with each brush stroke. If I glaze, then it, it can give you a more subtle blend for sure. But it means that I've got, I run that risk of uh, not getting that pop that I want. So not horrible, but we can leave it like that. I'm going to go back with a little bit more opacity now. And I am going to finish this out. I can't, I can't leave it like that. Want a little bit of elongated brightness towards this back edge. And then structure that to where it kind of triangulates in from there, like so. So I'm not doing just a flat rectangle coming off of this bevel. Notice how it creates this triangle, right? Because as this edge goes, the shape of a circle, that light's going to hit and bend because we have this radius here, and that radius flattens out. So not only is it a curve, as you see along the blade, it's also a curve this way across the flat of it. it has this convex shape. So light bends across those surfaces. That's why we always talk about the geometry of light when it hits an object. You know, if you simply do straight lines everywhere, that's the way light might hit and work on a cube. It won't bend. It'll go in straight lines and vertical on a cylinder even. Um, you know, but as soon as you start looking at spherical shapes, which technically this side of this blade is a portion of a sphere that's been chopped off, bored out, and, and uh, sharpened on the edge. right? But it still has the, cir the circumference of the outside of a circle here. And it also has the, the concave nature of the blade this way and this way. So it's more spherical than anything else. It just has a lot of compound shapes cut out of it that you have to deal with. But in doing so, you want to make sure that your highlights are always in these. I mean, triangles are the, the, the shape that you tend to find the most. Right? Now, I'm also going to come down here a little bit lower on the blade. I'm going to find another little bright spot. I might have talked enough to have all my paint dry up. Oh, no. Maybe I can push a little bit out here. And I'm going to create a little bit of shine. And notice how I'm really poking it towards the edge and then thinning it out, blending it out to where it nearly goes away entirely towards the inside there. Okay. Now that's gonna give you a little bit of punch. It's gonna make the blade look like maybe it has a ding in it or that we've got another hot spot, another light. Usually it's gonna make it look like you've got a little bit of a nick in the blade because that nick would pick up a little bitty shine and it's upward facing and then that would radiate out along the surface a little bit and then get bright right as it hit on the inside of this thing again. And remember, because it hits an edge, this little line that we did, we want to very carefully brighten that up real quick and then get it out just a little bit on that edge. So we have like almost this miniature dumbbell of color. We got a dot of brightness, another dot of brightness that I could stand to make brighter on the inside. 
and then a really faded line of light traveling from point to point there. See if we can't poke that up just a little bit right there and make a little T so it extends along that edge just a little. Like so. Okay. All right. So that gives us another little bitty spot of coloring there. And you could, if you wanted to, you could grab, let's, uh, let's go in here and mix a little bit of the uh, dark warm gray and the other color, uh, bright neutral gray. And we'll just stipple a little bit of that right below here. So again, it gives us a little bit more of a, a feel of shine there as opposed to just a, a, a line across darkness. So by, you know, putting in a little bit of your mid-tone underneath that bright spot that we created gives it a little bit more of a peak of shine, which makes some sense there. Right. Find it real quick. Come up here and extend this brightness a little bit on the top. I don't think we're bright enough for being our upward facing sections. So I'm gonna bring that out a little bit. Like so. There we go. And a little bit more down here. Bunch of a little bit of brightness on our, our dings or chips on the inside of the blade there. Okay. So now you have this, and this is a pretty good setup for making something look metallic. The problem is it doesn't have the final punch. And a lot of people look at this and there's something that they lack, but they stop here because we've got a bright color now that outlines our edge. We've got good reflective shine and located in the right spots, right? We've got the modulation of like a little bit of a darker reflection of his body or whatever over on this section inside here obviously on the inside of the blade, on the outside of the blade, right? But we've got good shine and uh, highlight, a lot of pop in it. So it looks pretty good. And it would pass as dull metal, but even dull metal gets almost to the bright color of your light, okay? So don't forget that the only real difference is that if you're doing dull metal, like this blade had been used a billion times and never really cleaned, so it's more like, you know, brushed aluminum now as opposed to polished steel. Um, then what that really means is that my dark spots just should lie further away from my bright spots, right? So that's what I was saying yesterday is like this edge, our darkest color is black, pure black right there. Then we go into the blue black and then we go into a little bit of the dark warm gray and then the mixes that we've been doing. And we finally get to bright up here. So it's like a normal faded color that we would paint for anything. Black down below, brightness up top. There's nothing dark in between to really give it more shine. So what if I do this, right? What if I take a little bit of our blue black, right? And our black, let me mix those together. And get a pretty dark color, but a little bit of hue in it. All right. And what if I were to come in real quick now, right? And so this dull edge, look what happens to it as I just go in right above this bright shine spot that I created. And I drop in a little bit more darkness right in here. Just a little bit of darkness right there. Bringing the kind of darkness that I had down below, bringing it closer to my brightest spot makes this look even shinier now. Okay, now if I continue to do that. And 
And I know that Zambies was not looking to make a really shiny blade. She wanted it to look like it was under the water. But I'm going to throw this in here so that everybody understands, right? So it, like this area right up in here. And then right in here. Basically pinning right next to some of these dark spots or these brightest spots on here. Pinning a little bit of darkness right up next to them like that. And you immediately increase the reflectiveness of the object because now the darkness stops being shadow and it starts being something reflected in it. It starts being a person, a body, something in the nearby vicinity of the material as you get darker and darker, but that darkness lies next to a bright reflection because the brightness on this is the reflection of the light in the area, right? The darkness on it can sort of be shadow, but I tell people to forget about shadows when you're painting metal. It's less about shadow and more about reflection. The shadow is the reflection of something nearby in the metallic, okay? So that's what we're doing here, right? So you can imagine that this up under here is less shadow and more reflection of the hand, the other part of the blade, the ground, right? Things like that. So you pump a little bit more darkness to grab a little bit more uh, contrast out of it. And now we're just gonna, we're gonna say, screw it, we're gonna punch up to white, okay? I'm just gonna take this last step and show you how now going up to the brightest of bright, because there's no value brighter than white. Right, we're gonna jump up into white and show you how we've added darkness that makes it shinier because our contrast increases. Now we're gonna add the brightest color possible to pump our contrast up even further. It's not gonna take a lot, okay? So here's, where, here's another spot where you can kind of do it. Like this is not looking bad, right? That could pass for kind of dull metal, right? But if you really want to make it work, you got to go to white. And if you're not going to use white, then you need to be darker on the blade than we are so that your bright neutral gray can provide the same contrast that white would. It's not that you always have to use white. When I said that, I'm thinking to myself, oh, people are going to always use white. You don't always have to use white, right? So like when we're doing uh, her, we're not using any white as we're going through and creating this bronze metallic look here, right? Like on her, her breastplate and on the uh, shield, right? We haven't used any white. We kept everything in a dark enough value and tone with all of the, the bronze colors, right? That now we can go to just olive flesh or ivory and get the brightness that we want and get that shine out of it that we need, right? And it's still, by doing that, is going to make it look duller, which is what we want. So if you want battle worn or like Zambies was saying, wanted it like it came out of the water, you still have to punch up your contrast, but it doesn't mean you have to go to white. It means you have to paint darker, right? And so you don't want so much mid-tone there. You still want to upset your mid-tone with these bright points of light, right? And the, the, how to say this, the darker your brightest color is, the grungier your metal is going to be, but it's still going to read as metal. The part that a lot of people forget is that they paint their grungy metal in darker colors, but they don't treat it the same way as you would if you were painting with white. Always treat your whatever your brightest color you choose to use on your metallics or your non-metal is, treat it like it's white. I don't care how bright it is, treat it like it's white. Paint it in the areas where white's going to be if you were painting it perfectly shiny plate mail or chrome and do it, treat it the exact same way. It just doesn't have to be that bright, right? Because you'll notice that right now, already our steel on, on this guy is already as bright, if not brighter than our bronze, right? From that shiny perspective. So now when we punch white on it, it's gonna be even more. Jen, what is going on? Tankers, checking out your online shop. What base highlight colors would you use for green power armor on Marines? Black green, most likely? Uh, if you wanted to, if you follow me a lot, uh, I tend to use a lot of odd colors underneath uh, for, uh, you know, the, the shadow. And green really, really likes, uh, like, burnt sienna underneath it. Browns, uh, you know, mahogany, dark purple could be a really good shadow color. Uh, but black green into... Uh, mixing into green and then into bright pale green, which unfortunately in the shop, bright pale green is sold out, but you can get there if you start adding olive flesh to green uh, as well. Works really, if you're doing like dark angels kind of stuff. All right, so now I'm going to take pure white. We're going to just poke it right on the top of this deal here and then come down a little bit off of that to start. Grab that curve. Kind of 
come right in here and start poking in my white down the bevel, but I'm not going to go all the way down. Then just kind of poke another highlight right at the bottom. And again, not extending this bright color out too far. You don't want to overlap your previous color to the point where it disappears. Right? You just want to kind of throw it in there. And you notice, look how much brighter that edge is now, but I haven't put hardly any paint on there at all. Look at that. Right? You can see that little bitty thin dotting of paint down that edge, but look at the value. Right? So where people tend to mess up here is they put too much of this bright color on. They cover up something else they've done. They don't realize that, oh, I don't have to use much of this at all because the eye will see about 10 times more paint than you put on when you create this contrast. I don't know if 10 times is right. Somebody's going to laugh at me, but... Again, we'll just kind of find this point over here real quick. This is our brightest area, so I'm going to elongate my white a little bit into there, but still create that same kind of triangular feel. And bring that edge over a little bit more. Gotta come off that edge where we did the brightness here. Find it right there. And I'm not doing this whole edge. As a matter of fact, I can even kind of dot it out if I want to. Just a smidge of white on that bevel down below. So, maybe find a little poke of shine in between my two bright areas if I want. And then I'm just going to do that same thing. I'm going to find each one of these bright spots that I've created as I've moved along, right? I've, I'm just repeating the process and sneaking in little, little spots of color. So right down here, I want to just sneak in a little bit of white right here at this corner. Boy, I barely have any paint left on my brush at all here. There we go. And then right in here, this little... Ganer on my brush. It's not that the brush is curled. It's building up paint because I'm painting so fine. And I'm barely pa poking any paint in here at all. Just enough to get that little bitty highlight down low. And I'm basically rinsing my brush and going back after every little area that I do so I can repoint and get exactly the amount of paint I need. Don't try to overextend when you're doing your bright highlights like this. Do a little area, then clean your brush and come back and do the next one. Want just the very tip here, like so. And then I'm going to want to grab a little bit of this beveled edge. Coming right off the tip like that. And that's all I want. I can go back in here. I've got these kind of bright nicks. I can find like one or two of those maybe and drop a little brightness in there too. You'll notice how the white, once it's on there, all of your other bright gray tends to go away. Right? Visually, it's not. But the white is so overwhelming that if you don't uh, do it subtly, right? If you put too much of this color on there, you're going to lose all that mid-tone that you spent so much time working on. All right, so again, I'm going to want just a little poke of brightness right here on this edge. And right on the inside here. So. And then maybe... I carry this one down just a little bit further. OK. 
catch a little dot of brightness on that one. Probably catch a little dot of brightness right there. Like that. And then I want to add my bright spot on the back of the curve of this hook. Again, I want to get a little bit of motion of my light down and up from that edge. Just basically poking the brush at it till it throws a little bit of paint on there. But now look at how nice our brightness goes from super bright where it peaks at that point and then it fades out and then it gets bright again right at that divot and then it fades out a little bit of poke of brightness. Then as it goes underneath we just have that bright neutral gray still calling the edge out. But now we've got metal. Right? So now that reads like metal and you can do all of your other coloring to it. You know, in this case, you could have it go as bright as you want. The more color you put on, if you want to reflect the sky in it, then that'll make it look shinier if you start putting blues and greens underneath for the dirt and the grass or whatever. Okay. But what happens to most people is that they forget to punch their brightness far enough and their darkness down far enough. And those two things are super important when dealing with anything that's a reflective hard surface because Without all the darkness, you're not going to get the contrast no matter how bright you go. It's just going to look like it was painted gray and it has good highlight, but without a really, really dark reflection on it, it's not going to look like it's shiny at all, right? It's going to look like black jeans, you know? So you have to make sure that you poke in. That's why when we put that darkness right in there, right? They put that darkness right in there in the middle, that now we've got darkness down low, darkness in the middle here, darkness up high, darkness on the other side there, underside there, and all of those dark spots now start to feel like reflections of something in the distance or his body reflecting off of this face of this spike on the blade. All right? And obviously, but we created some texture in there too by doing the dots on the highlight edge. If you don't want it to look like it's beat up, if you want it to be a fresh edge, then don't do that dotting because that will give it a texture.